Okay, let's simplify the expression. And basically what that means is that we want to add these two rational expressions up. So the uh, rational expressions, that's the term I used, rational expressions, or effectively uh, fractions with variables in them. There's a little bit more of a technical definition uh, to that, but if you're an algebra student and you're like, oh yeah, I've seen these things before, well, we're not, we're not gonna refer to these as fractions. Uh, we wanna refer to them as rational expressions. So I could uh, you know, phrase this problem in a lot of different ways, add the rational expressions, or let's just simplify this expression. We wanna make it as simple as possible. So if you think you can do this, uh, it's not that hard of a problem. Maybe I'll go ahead and pause the video and put your answer into the comment section. I'd certainly be interested to see what you come up with. But I'm gonna um, talk about a couple different approaches here to do this and some things you need to be thinking about uh, when you do a problem like this. So I'm gonna get into this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher and I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of your mathematics, I can help you with your course. Now, if you're preparing for any exam that has math on it, so for example, the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Acuplacer CLEP exam, uh, ALEX exam, teacher certification exam, you get the idea. Uh, there's a ton of exams uh, that people have to take, and there's always this little math section. And if you don't get through it, you don't get through the exam. I could help you again prepare and pass those exams. Now, if you homeschool, I have a very comprehensive homeschool math curriculum you might be interested in. And if you don't have any math notes, what are you going to study from, right? Well, listen, you can use my math notes. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to leave links to my notes in the description of this video as well, but you need to take your own notes, okay? Note taking is one of the most critical things you uh, uh, need to be doing for your success in mathematics, right? This is just something I've learned over decades of teaching math. Those students who take great math notes almost always end up looking like this at the end of the year. They're so proud of their A+, plus and they're like, yes, my notes are awesome. Okay, so enough about the notes. Let's get into this problem. Again, if you think you could do it, Pause the video, um, put your you know answer in the comment section, but let's get to it. All right, so here it is. We want to add these uh, rational expressions. So we need to, anytime you're adding fractions, I call, I'm calling these rational expressions, right? Just like any fractions, like let's say one plus uh, one half, I'm sorry, over three halves, if the the denominators are the same, I could just go ahead and straight away add the fractions. But if the denominators are different, like one fifth plus two thirds, well then I'm gonna have to do some other things, all right? And you can see here, the denominators are different. So what do I need to do in this situation? Well, you can consider um, finding the LCD. That's one approach. Now you might be saying, what is this little symbol? Well, this is my bow tie method. Well, not my bow tie method, I didn't make it up. But I've done a ton of videos on how to add and subtract fractions. Just check out, um, uh, if you want to find out more about this particular technique, which you definitely need to know, all right, it's one of the best, most powerful hacks you can have uh, with uh, respect to fractions, and not only fractions um, with um, fractions with variables, but fractions with the numbers as well. Very, very important stuff. So check out that bow uh, tie technique. We're not going to use that in this particular um, video, but basically the way it goes is we, you would go this times this, okay, plus this times this. That would form the numerator, and then we would multiply the respective denominators to get our final denominator. But that's not a good strategy. Although you need to know this, you know, you, you got to be very careful on what technique or what approach you use. So there's a couple different ways we could approach this problem. We always want to work smarter, not harder. So the bottom line here is that you need to understand how to find the LCD. You need to understand how to factor. You need to, uh, you know, know this little bow tie technique because, you know, there's, um, you know, it all depends on the situation, what tool you want to, it's the easiest way to approach this particular problem, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and show you a couple different ways we can do this problem, and then I'm going to uh, end with the easiest way. All right, so the first thing is we can see here that our denominators are not the same, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and uh, find the LCD. How can I find the LCD? Well, I could factor this denominator, 4x uh, plus 2. 
uh, I could factor out a 2, so that's 2 times 2x plus 1. Now, if you don't know how to factor, you're going to have a very difficult time in algebra. So you got to learn how to factor. Of course, all this stuff I'm saying, I have tons of videos uh, on in my uh, uh, my YouTube channel, in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist. But, of course, I teach this very thoroughly in my math courses. Okay, so here you can see I have 2x plus 1. Uh, 2 times 2x plus 1, but here I only have a lonely 2x plus 1. But if I multiply this by 2, I would have a matching uh, denominator. The denominators would be the same. So that's the way we want to go. Let's go ahead and just multiply this expression by 2, okay, because it would end up being exactly like that. But if I multiply the denominator by 2, the deal is I have to also multiply the numerator by 2, okay? So uh, just like with regular arithmetic and fractions, okay, if I'm going to multiply this by 2, I'm going to multiply that by 2 so we don't break the fraction and turn it into something else. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So this 2 times this term, 2x plus 1, I'm using a distributive property, okay? So this is going to be 4x plus 2. And now I have a 4x plus 2, 4x plus 2. I have the same denominator, Okay, and 2 times this x plus 1, that's 2 times 1 is 2, and then this 2 times that x is 2x. Okay, so if we understand that, we're ready to kind of take it to the next level. So I have the same denominator, so I'm going to write the denominator. Okay, then I'm going to add the respective numerators. So that's going to be 2x plus 2x plus 2. Okay, so when I do that, 2x and 2x, I'm going to combine like terms. I'm going to get 4x, and, but I got this 2 over here as well. So this would be 4x plus 2 over 4x plus 2. Anything divided by itself is 1. So the answer is 1. Now, if you got that uh, answer correct and you put that in the comment section, then I must go ahead and reward you with a happy face and a good old 1984 Mohawk with an A plus and 100%. Nice job. Okay. Now, uh, we could have done the bow tie method, but that would have been a lot more work. Okay, and that method's great, but again, it's all about looking for opportunities to do proms, you know, efficiently. But there was even a better way to do this prom, and some of you are like, "Yeah, that's I even did uh, even even in a more efficient manner." So let's go back to the original prom here, right? We had that 4x plus two. Uh, let's pick it up where we we factored out the numerator. Okay, the, I'm sorry, the denominator. Okay, so if I factored out the two. And, I, and um, I'm left with this expression. So instead of multiplying this by 2 to get the same LCD, what you could have done, and this is the really the, the preferable approach, always factor. factor. The factoring leads to so many great opportunities. Here, you could cross-cancel these 2s. These are like factors. Boom, boom. These go away right here. These 2 I can just get rid of. So um, when I these 2s go away, this problem becomes this. Okay, how cool is that? All right, and take a look at the denominators. Perfectly the same, 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1. So I could just simply add the numerators. That's x plus x plus 1, x plus x plus 1. There you go. And over 2x plus 1 right there. Okay, same denominator. So it's 2x plus 1, and x plus x is 2x plus 1. There you go, 2x plus 1 divided by 2x plus 1 is 1. So this is even a nicer way to uh, do this particular problem. So again... You can um, approach any problem in mathematics and algebra in different ways. You always want to look for the most efficient uh, pass, which requires you to have different uh, skills, okay, different tools, if you will, right? I would say the one thing, though, uh, you definitely need to know how to factor, okay? Factoring is one of the most important skills uh, you need in algebra because it comes up all the time. But uh, this particular problem is actually pretty easy in terms of um, adding or simplifying uh, these two rational expressions. There is more complicated type of problems where you really do have to calculate the LCD or figure out how to find the LCD of uh, variable denominators. Again, I have videos on all this stuff in my Algebra and Algebra 2 playlist, and I teach it thoroughly in all my courses as well. But if this little video helped you out in some small, microscopic way, please go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic to advanced. Uh, my goal is, is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, I have a ton of content on my channel there. I'm going to be posting new stuff all the time as well. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. 
Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.